What is the chance it's going to rain tomorrow? What age will I live to? How likely am I to pass this exam? These things are all covered by probabilities. So what is a probability? Probabilities are usually written as P of E equals, which is just a formal way to say this is the probability that an event E occurs. This number ranges from zero, or impossible, to 100% or one, a certain event. You will often find probabilities written as decimals, so it's important to be able to convert back and forth between them and fractions, or percentages. What can we do with probabilities? You already know how to add them from level one. This is the or statement. For example, what is the probability when rolling a dice that you'll get a two or a six? P of two or six equals P of two plus P of six equals one over six plus one over six equals two over six. It usually makes sense to express this in the simplest form possible. In this case, P of two or six equals one over three. In NCA level two, we can expect and statements as well. This is when we multiply our probabilities. Try to picture a Venn diagram. In the circle on the left, we have the probability that someone goes to the dairy and buys something to eat, 40%. In the circle on the right, we have 20%, the probability that someone buys something to drink. There are two other options though. The first is that someone comes in and buys both food and drink. Our AND statement. So what is the probability of someone buying both food and drink? This is easy, we just multiply our two values. It's easiest to do this as a decimal, but really you can do this however you like. P of food equals 0.4 and P of drink equals 0.2. This new overlap in our Venn diagram is our P of food and drink equals 0.4 times 0.2 equals 0.08 or 8%. Easy, right? So our second option then is that people come into the dairy and might not buy anything. How do we figure out what the probability of this is? Remember that we said 100% or 1 was certain? Well, all options have to add up to P of E equals 1. So we subtract our known probabilities from this. So the probability of buying nothing is equal to 1 minus the probability of food minus the probability of drink equals 1 minus 0 0.4 minus 0 0.2 equals 0 0.4 or 40%. Notice how we didn't count our value for both food and drink. If we did, we'd be counting it twice, which we don't want to do. This will become important with tree diagrams, which you'll see later, when we might only want to count our AND probabilities. Now we might want to consider what we can do with this new information. What if I wanted to ask you, out of 153 people who visit the dairy, how many bought something? All we do is multiply this total by our probability. So the number of people who bought something equals 153 times the probability of buying food or drink equals 153 times the probability of food plus the probability of drink equals 153 times 0 0.6 equals 91.8. But we aren't quite done. We need a unit. In this case, people is our unit because that's what we're working with. By adding this at the end, we show the person reading what we mean. We should also round appropriately. You can't get 0.8 of a person, at least usually, so we round up to 92 people. All this will come up again in later videos, so here's some key points to remember for now. P of E is the probability of an event occurring. The probability of this event occurring ranges from zero, impossible, to 100% or one, certain. When asked for the probability using an or statement, we add our probability values. When asked for an and statement, we multiply our probabilities. For the probability of something not occurring, we take all the probabilities of it occurring away from the total of 1. To find the number of something, just multiply the total by the probability, remembering to round appropriately.